Hi, my name is Alexander Smith, and I'm an application engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. In today's video, I'm going to introduce and demonstrate proper usage of each of the standard mates in a SOLIDWORKS assembly. For this demonstration, I'm going to be putting together this knuckle joint assembly. To begin the assembly, I will start off with these two knuckle parts. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm going to be using all of the standard mate types which can be found under the standard mates section of the mate property manager. To get started, I'm going to add a concentric mate, which by definition is used to align the central axes of two circular features. Being one of the most commonly used mates, the concentric mate is generally used for aligning cylinders. And so I will apply it to the two cylindrical faces of the holes on my knuckles to align them. Once the mate is added, we can see how it works. I'm able to rotate the knuckle and slide it along the common axis, but I cannot move it away from this axis. For concentric mates, we also have the option to lock its rotation, which, if enabled, will stop the knuckle from rotating about the common axis and only allow it to slide along it. We don't want the rotation to be locked, so I'll disable it. Next up, I'd like to introduce the distance mate, which, as its name suggests, constrains the distance between the selected component features. When it is applied between two points, it simply constrains the distance between them. However, when applied to two planar faces or linear edges, it will make them parallel to one another as well. In this assembly, I'm going to use it to maintain a 2mm gap between the faces of the knuckles to minimize the friction they generate. SOLIDWORKS added the distance in the wrong direction, so I'll flip the direction and set its value to be 2mm. Now, I'm unable to slide the knuckle along the common axis due to this distance mate. Now, I'll add this pin to my assembly, which is used to hold the knuckles together. First, I'll quickly add a concentric mate, and then I'd like to bring the head of the pin all the way up to the knuckle so that they're touching. Because the face of the pin is planar and the face of the knuckle is rounded, I must use what is known as a tangent mate. Tangent mates place a circular feature tangent to another feature. I'll add a tangent mate between the planar face on the pin and the rounded face of the knuckle. Now, the pin cannot be pulled away from the knuckle. Next up, I'd like this nut here to sit on the end of the pin and keep it secured. I'll add a concentric mate to align their axes, and then I'd like the nut to be flush with the end face of the pin which requires the use of another very common mate, the coincident mate. The coincident mate orients features so that they touch or coincide with one another. For example, if used on two planes, they will become coplanar, meaning they can move along one another but cannot be pulled apart. If applied between two linear or planar features, they will also be made parallel. I'll make the end face of the pin coincident with the side face on the nut. Now, I'm unable to pull the nut off of the pin, keeping it secured. At this point, the knuckle joint assembly is complete and fully functional. Everything stays together, and the knuckles are able to rotate about the pin. To demonstrate the remaining standard mates, I'm going to use them one by one in order to position the knuckle joint in different ways. First, if I'd like the knuckle joint to be completely flat, I can use a parallel mate which, as its name implies, orients two planar or linear features to be parallel or at 180 degrees to one another. Now, I'm unable to rotate the knuckle because of that parallel mate. Conversely, if I'd like the knuckle joint to be oriented at a 90 degree angle, I can delete the parallel mate and add a perpendicular mate instead, which orients two planar or linear features to be perpendicular or at 90 degrees to one another. Adding this mate once again stops the knuckle from rotating. Finally, if I'd prefer to control the angle between the knuckles, I can add an angle mate instead, which orients two planar or linear features to be at a prescribed angle to one another. With this mate, I'm able to change the angular value between the selected faces as I see fit. There's one standard mate I haven't mentioned yet, and that is because it is very rarely used, known as the lock mate. To demonstrate it, I've added an extra nut to the assembly floating in space. Now, having deleted the angle mate, I'll add a lock mate between the nut and the female knuckle part. 
The lock mate maintains the position and orientation between two components and renders them fully constrained relative to each other. So, with this mate, the nut remains floating in the air and moves with the knuckle when I rotate it, maintaining a constant position and orientation between the nut and the knuckle. That's the last of the standard mates, and so we've come to the end of the video, having introduced and demonstrated each of the standard mates in a SOLIDWORKS assembly. You now have the required knowledge to properly use each of these standard mates in your own assemblies. Thanks for watching!